to the marketplace. In the digital age and as things continuous, continuously progress, you find that people usually go to digital loans because that's the easiest way to get money. Now, for credit providers on the other end, this can be a very risky business considering it's very hard to lend on the digital space and have collateral at the same time. Now, as you know, or as you will know, the government is also a lender through the Hasla Fund. The Hustler Fund was made in order to ensure that people from, you know, the lower cadres, MSMEs get funding without necessarily needing collateral. It's a credit base for the people. However, this particular loan has a default rate of almost 30 percent, around 20 to 30 percent. The Cabinet Secretary for MSMEs and Cooperative Development had a few things to say about the Hustler Fund. Let's take a look. Discussing with Safaricom to make sure that those who borrowed at least pay back. Uh, of course, before I used to say don't pay, but now I'm saying pay. <laughs> I'm now saying pay. It will help other Kenyans. It will help other Kenyans. But in consultation with the service providers, we are coming, we are coming out with other innovations to make sure that those who have borrowed money just pay back. The, if there are no frameworks in any institution, in, uh, financial institution, then what means that there will be loopholes? That is the Cabinet Secretary, MSMEs and Cooperative Development, Wycliffe Oparanya, and of course the SIC CEO. And they, they were just talking about digital borrowing. Pay don't pay what are the consequences what are the possible repercussions a lot of credit providers have a problem with borrowers who take but are not willing to give it back wanjiko maybe if you could just bring clarity to that there's a default rate that's very high you're in a situation where you don't have collateral and these people are still going to try and borrow elsewhere because crb you know regulations now are a little bit lags how exactly do you feel about this mm. I think for me that's actually personal mm -hmm. uh, because I'm coming from a space where mm -hmm. uh, from, from around 2013, 2014, there was the AGP opportunity, mm -hmm. the access to government procurement opportunities. Mm -hmm. So these are women, youth and persons with disability mm -hmm. who were given an opportunity to, uh, to sell to the government. 30% mm -hmm. um, of the government uh, tenders were going to this group. Mm -hmm. And it really was a good opportunity, and it gave us money at the time. Mm -hmm. Over time, it's not as lucrative. Mm -hmm. uh, came COVID, for instance, mm -hmm. and uh, most of the financial institutions, mm -hmm. mine included, mm -hmm. we've had challenges making collections for some of that uh, from some of those clients. Mm -hmm. So some had secured their loans, mm -hmm. and others had not secured their loans. Right. Um, uh, you go back, of course, mm -hmm. maybe up to today, mm -hmm. they haven't been. Paid. Right. So, yes. So that means. Mm -hmm. Your capital also mm -hmm. hasn't been paid. Mm -hmm. So even when you have to list them with CRB, mm -hmm. you have to wait for the next opportunity that they get. Right. Where maybe if the opportunity has come, then they are having to go to fin other financial institutions to look for the money. Mm -hmm. And then because maybe I listed them or another institution listed them, mm -hmm. then they can't be able to access that money because they are being asked, mm -hmm. go pay up, mm -hmm. then you come back. So at least that's helpful. But again, mm -hmm. Um, uh, the situation has been there are many people with outstanding loans today, mm -hmm. but they don't have the cash. Mm -hmm. Maybe their businesses are no longer functioning. Right. So there's been a, like a wait and see mm -hmm. uh, until maybe things open up. Mm -hmm. So some we are holding their titles, mm -hmm. some we are holding their logbooks, right. some uh, just the records in our books that mm -hmm. uh, uh, they owe us, right. but we just have to wait. Mm -hmm. So it's been that time maybe we're having to change the model and see. Mm -hmm. So do we also do mm -hmm. the 5,000 mm -hmm. to 10,000? Mm -hmm. Because maybe that's where there are more clients. Right. Yeah, so you're having to look at uh, changing the business model. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure many of the financial institutions are doing that. Mm -hmm. Because indeed, the situation is that for people who have not been able to pay, mm -hmm. it's not like they are refusing to pay today. Right. They just don't have the means to pay. Mm -hmm.
and it's very unfortunate. All right. Even yeah. the cabinet secretary, you know, in that particular event was saying that they now, you know, lowered the lowest amount from around 500 shillings to 100 shillings because maybe that is what Kenyans could pay. Maybe that is the amount that people should be given so that they pay. We uh, can't even talk about the pending bills. To right. Be, uh, we can't go there. Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> Let's not go there. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a headache for everyone, I no, think. No. And of course, you know, the cabinet secretary did say that uh, the service providers, Safaricom and the telcos that are associated with, you know, the Hasla Fund are coming up with innovations to ensure those who borrow repay. When it comes to, you know, the credit information sharing, you've made this a little bit easier. There, there is this information, it's already on a hub that people can access. However, how do you make people pay? Even with this kind of innovation, yes, you have my details, you have my name, you have my number, how will you make me pay? Yeah, it's, it's tricky because um, there are different reasons why people don't pay. Mm -hmm. Some, it is like a hobby. Right. <laughs> Others are really in a difficult situation. Mm -hmm. um, Others are, are testing the, the market to right. see how, what, how far <laughs> can I stretch this thing. Right. Uh, we had an example actually when we were proposing to start a debt cancelling framework right. for those who feel indebted. Mm -hmm. Somebody quickly came when we, we made uh, some information available that we could start debt cancelling and we were testing the waters. Mm -hmm. Somebody came and showed us their situation. Mm -hmm. They said, I'm in trouble. I have borrowed 31 different loans outstanding as we speak. Right. And when we did a summation, mm -hmm. it was 1.2 million shillings right. from an accumulation of small, small amounts. Mm -hmm. And this person really was getting into an over-indebtedness situation. Mm -hmm. The beauty with the credit bureau is that by the time you are accumulating 31 different loans, surely loan, uh, lender number 10 right. should, should, have, should have seen something like, happening. Right. And so a credit bureau can actually be mm -hmm. a, a, a source of protection mm -hmm. for somebody who is likely to get over indebted mm -hmm. as a result of what we would call reckless lending. Mm -hmm. A reckless lender can be guided mm -hmm. by a credit bureau uh, to see that, oh, this could have been a good payer right. if it wasn't for us who are overloading that person. So a, a lender can turn a good borrower into a bad borrower right. because of not being careful. Mm -hmm. So one of the things is that it's a deterrent mm -hmm. to, for, for people not to excessively borrow. Right. And it's also a protection to the lender mm -hmm. because if you keep losing your money, you'll soon close. Nobody wants to see lenders uh, failing, mm -hmm. and so a bureau does protect that from both sides. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Uh, you know, Wanjiko, you did say that maybe some of the credit providing businesses should, you know, adjust their amounts a little bit lower to get this market range of people between 5,000 to 10,000 shillings. Now, I'm looking at the market for cash loans and I'm seeing mobile bank stroke app, which is, you know, one of the places that people could get loans from. 54% of borrowers use this. We have social network, that is your friends, you know, your neighbors, your cousins, your mother, your uncle. 22% of, you know, borrowers usually veer towards that direction. We have Chama, you could borrow from your Chama, 10% of borrowers are there. And then there's Shopkeeper, which is, you know, someone that a lot of people don't usually uh, consider. It's 6%. There is this popularity with mobile bank stroke apps. And these are adjustments that a lot of credit providers have to make now that, you know, things are changing. Where do you see this trend going? Um, well, I think it's already here. Mm -hmm. It's already here because mm -hmm. we are, in this country, there's a huge percentage that is holding mobile phones. Mm -hmm. uh, my mom, who is 83 years old, has a phone. Even if she doesn't know how to read or write, when you send her money, she's aware. Right and she knows where to go and withdraw the money from, and mm -hmm. she has her record. And she's also aware mm -hmm. that if somebody accessed her phone, mm -hmm. she's, she can easily lose her money. Right. So all, all, all those the risks, uh, even at her age, are uh, taken care of. Mm -hmm. uh, and I keep saying, even for me, uh, at Nyali Capital, mm -hmm. I'm a financial institution, having started from the bit of mm -hmm. no, no, no techie, no digital mm -hmm. thoughts from the beginning. 
uh, but uh, even from um, a conference that I attended last week on uh, diaspora tech conference and I was a speaker. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have to interact with technology mm -hmm. as a financial institution, otherwise we face a Kodak moment. Right. Yeah, because I'll, I'll be able to get as many people, as many people borrow, mm -hmm. who are probably already my existing clients and I already have a database of them, a, a, a database of them mm -hmm. and be able to lend to them directly mm -hmm. on the mobile platform. Mm -hmm. But am I doing that mm -hmm. at the speed that I'm supposed to do so? Right. And if I'm not doing it, mm -hmm. what am I waiting for? Right. So really, mm -hmm. um, at the level where we are at, mm -hmm. how the, the everything else is growing in terms of technology, mm -hmm. we can't do without the mobile platforms. Right. So even for us, uh, what you can say, we are not analog anymore because mm -hmm. why uh, mm -hmm. the central bank needs to regulate us mm -hmm. is because they say, as long as you're using m to disperse and collect, Right. You're, you're not digital. You're, you're digital. Right. So you've got to be regulated by mm -hmm. at least uh, the, the central bank. Mm -hmm. So again, mm -hmm. our processes, mm -hmm. even the way we are onboarding our customers mm -hmm. and so on, mm -hmm. that is the space we have to go to. All right. So the only fear f uh, from where I sit um, is that I wouldn't like say, and I think probably it's a value system, mm -hmm. to throw like m money to everyone. Right. Because I know. I make money from collection. So if I throw to everyone, mm -hmm. will I collect? Even if mm -hmm. I raise the rates to be at 99% and mm -hmm. I don't collect, mm -hmm. I'm not making money. Right. So maybe within the net of my own clients, mm -hmm. I can be able to serve them digitally mm -hmm. to start with before I can think of the other products mm -hmm. that I can be able to pass to them again using the same platform. Right. On the other hand, mm -hmm. I run a, a circle also that I target SMEs. Mm -hmm. It's known as Ecobi Circle. Mm -hmm. So there, mm -hmm. I have an app for my members. Mm -hmm. So they're able to get their statements from there, mm -hmm. and they're also able to borrow, again, the range of 2,000 to 10,000 from right. the app without having to use the other longer process. Okay. So yes, we, 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 if we don't do that, mm -hmm. we are going to be overtaken, right. and we'll be out of business, right. which is not what we want to do. They usually say change or perish. It's yeah. a very popular phrase on X. Uh, now, you said something very interesting. There is the risk factor. It's very risky to just give your money to someone that you don't even know on a digital platform, God forbid that they, you know, go incognito, you'll never find them ever again. The government was trying to focus on a credit score system, you know, as opposed to a collateral based system. This is a situation where they check your credit, how exactly is your behavior, your repayment rate. As she was saying, you check, is it 2 a.m. when you know this person pays certain bills? Mm -hmm. They want to gauge all those things. One of the places that they wanted to do that through was the Hustler Fund. However, of course, everything has its own gaps. You know, as an information sharing, you know, institution, how practical is it to go to a credit score system like, you know, first world countries? Are we there yet? Actually, a lot has happened in the credit score environment in Kenya. Mm -hmm. um, the credit bureaus are providing credit scores. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, the interesting thing is that uh, not many people are in the worst credit score uh, mm -hmm. position. Right. The majority are very good credit scores. Mm -hmm. And that's why we encourage that this mechanism uh, continues to uh, take in data around good payment. Mm -hmm. Because the credit bureau is not just about mm -hmm. blacklisting, mm -hmm. identifying who is not paying. Mm -hmm. That's not the primary basis. Maybe it started like that. Right. Uh, but where it is going now, the credit scoring system has become entrenched. Right. All the credit bureaus are now providing scores. Mm -hmm. They are uh, looking at the positive uh, information mm -hmm. and they are providing a score that shows that if you are really a good payer, mm -hmm. you are entitled to even a lower interest rate. Right. And the banks have started uh, using the scores mm -hmm. um, to, give, to, to, to determine the interest rate that you, you deserve. Right. And so, Credit scoring is happening. The Hustler Fund will, will, will do scoring. Mm -hmm. And I think when the CS was talking about uh, working with Safaricom and other, 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 other stakeholders, mm -hmm. it was in the context of um, uh, strengthening the scoring framework. Right. Uh, and the Hustler Fund indeed will, will introduce a score to the best of our expectation. Mm -hmm. uh, what we would love to see is where the scores are being integrated mm -hmm. so that you don't just have only a hustler score mm -hmm. because that is only saying 
mm -hmm. one aspect of your life. Right. Uh, if you have got credit from SACO, from MFI, from all over the place, mm -hmm. it would not be right mm -hmm. to have just a score that defines only about mm -hmm. the hustler. Mm -hmm. Uh, that will not give a complete picture of who you are. Right. So our hope and encouragement to the government is that let's integrate this, this course, let's integrate this data, mm -hmm. because the more data you have about an individual's repayment history, the more accurate that score is. Because what is a score? A score is really a reflection of your past behavior mm -hmm. that influences mm -hmm. uh, or is expected to determine your future behavior. Right. And uh, if you just pick one element, mm -hmm then that will not be predictive enough of your future behavior. All right. Yeah. Wanjiko, you have said that, you know, as a credit provider, you can't just throw money at people. There is a situation where ideally, if, you know, the government's plans comes to fruition, you will find that, you know, there's a person's credit score that is given to you, and then you can gauge whether to give them or not. As a credit provider, would you, you know, give uh, a, a loan basing on this? Yes, I would, mm -hmm. uh, but I would do more. Mm -hmm. I would start uh, from a point of, and especially now, mm -hmm. um, I, I live in Mombasa, and uh, I've, I've, I'm also um, mm -hmm. the director at uh, Kenya National Chamber of Commerce, uh, Mombasa chapter, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of support to the SMEs that we see. Mm -hmm. And the SMEs are coming in the space of, uh, especially the youth, mm -hmm. the women, the youth. Um, that, that's also my space. Mm -hmm. So what's happening there, uh, we have incubation centers, quite a number of them. Mm -hmm. So their work is actually to incubate these SMEs and their ideas. Mm -hmm. So these young people mm -hmm. are people who, after they get their product right, mm -hmm. and they are ready even to take to the market, mm -hmm. then we partner with them. Mm -hmm. So because that market today is different from the market that would say is the Mamamboga mm -hmm. and the other ladies that we, who have been our, our traditional clients, for right. instance. Mm -hmm. So these are techie people. Uh, the young people don't want to keep moving. Mm -hmm. they, they don't want stories. They would like to use the uh, technology. Mm -hmm. So that is the space, again, that I have started to form partnerships mm -hmm. so that the youths who are under this incubation center, mm -hmm. these other incubation centers, mm -hmm. we are getting them together, We're even forming them into groups. Right. Because uh, when we lend to the, our women through groups, for mm -hmm. instance, it has worked for many years. Even when you speak to the youth, they will tell you, mm -hmm. uh, my mom has always been a member of, uh, of this, mm -hmm. uh, maybe my auntie and so on. Right. So can this concept again work with the youth? Mm -hmm. But we start from the ones who are in an incubation center. Mm -hmm. And for sure, mm -hmm. these are not going to be consumers of papers. Right. Yeah, so we have to move with them at the pace where they are at. All right. Yes. Now, let's talk about standardization, Jared. There is, you know, it's a free market. We understand that. I have the money. I get to determine how much I want in interest, and I get to determine the, you know, requirements that I need you to fill up, and, of course, the timeline that I want you to pay me back with. Now, there's the aspect of pricing and debt collection. How much interest is too much interest? As a, you know, information, uh, information sharing, credit information sharing body, do you believe that maybe there could be a situation where we could have a standard pricing for these digital lending apps? Would that be fair market-wise to these individuals who are offering their money to other people? And would there be a situation where borrowers could have, you know, a standard rate for everyone? Well, it's been considered in the past, uh, even for the banks, the, you know, the formal banking institutions, mm -hmm. that we introduce caps. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't go beyond this mm -hmm. when you are charging interest. Mm -hmm. um, there has been a lot of debate from eco among economists mm -hmm. and financial uh, experts, mm -hmm. and largely the answer is that it's not a wise thing. Right. In a free market, in an open market environment, um, Controlling interest rates uh, for lenders is, does, not, does not work. Uh, because if people want to borrow and you have limited the interest rate and the person who is lending says, no, I can't lend you because mm -hmm. I see you are a risky borrower and yet I can't charge you higher, mm -hmm. then you are frustrated. Mm -hmm. and, and the other thing that would happen is that then those other underground uh, lenders mm -hmm. will begin to thrive. Mm -hmm. Because as much as government then can control the interest rate, it cannot be able to pull out and fish out everybody who is probably violating the, mm -hmm. the, 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 the ceiling. Right. 
And so you get into a lot of, just like, uh, you know, when the foreign currency was, uh, inter, uh, uh, exchange rates were controlled, right. then the black market, market thrives. Right. That's one disadvantage of controlling interest rates. The other thing is that, uh, strictly speaking, mm -hmm. uh, what you need to do is um, uh, uh, sensitize borrowers mm -hmm. to understand that um, there are cheaper rates. Right. Don't, don't, don't control the interest rates, just mm -hmm. say that, you know, we have interest rates that range from this to anything above this. Right. And when consumers know, mm -hmm. then you create a market competition mm -hmm. that uh, encourages those who are trying to charge high to come down because otherwise mm -hmm. the borrowers are running away from them. Right. So in a free market, mm -hmm. the best thing is to create information awareness mm -hmm. to the public and let those who are charging low mm -hmm get more customers and others will bring down their interest rates. Right. Yeah. As we start to conclude, because believe it or not, we only have like about three minutes. Wanjiku, <laughs> maybe if you could just tell us, a free market is very important for credit providers such as yourself to thrive. However, as he said, you know, with regulations and sometimes, you know, restrictions, you could find that the underbelly of this particular, you know, sector comes up and takes up, you know, the people that you could be lending to and it would ruin the entire dynamics. How well do you think this particular, you know, sector could be regulated, but keep it fair for players such as yourself? Um, I think at the beginning there was something like a self-regulation. Mm -hmm you know, for, for some of us. Mm -hmm. uh, and it also goes back to the same sensitization, even for us as lenders who probably are not uh, regulated or in the process of getting regulated. Mm -hmm. um, what are some of these standards that others are following? Mm -hmm. And what is that that we could start to adhere to, mm -hmm. to start with, even before we get to everything else and self-regulate ourselves? Because mm -hmm. again, if the law is to regulate, mm -hmm. so we also have to go towards the way of the law, right. but maybe step by step. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I've, I've actually applied for, 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 for the DCP mm -hmm. and uh, I got feedback. Mm -hmm. So I'm still in the process, but the feedback you get, you actually need to get to, to employ another mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, human resource mm -hmm. to go back again mm -hmm. and, and do the review. Mm -hmm. And it's quite a bit of work. So right. again, with self-regulation, bit uh, in bits and pieces, mm -hmm. so that we can have time mm -hmm. over which we can actually get into the reg regulated space, mm -hmm. but within our pace. All right. Yeah, but if that is the way to go, mm -hmm. then we don't have a choice, we all have to go mm -hmm. that way. But I also wanted to add something because we are concluding. Right. Um, around the space also of lending. We've mm -hmm. spoken about lending a lot, mm -hmm. but I also, there's a bit of savings that probably right. Uh, we we haven't talked about mm -hmm. because my view is that the five thousand we are keeping on borrowing and the mm -hmm. ten you know those small amounts that we are keeping on borrowing on mm -hmm. consumption. Mm -hmm. My view is mm -hmm. those are the monies we should be saving. Right. So that maybe in a year, mm -hmm. three thousand is around mm -hmm. thirty six k for you, mm -hmm. and not a debt because mm -hmm. it will be again. Maybe the 3,000 you borrow four times in a year to probably be 12,000 in the form of a loan. Right. So maybe we flip it sometimes in as much as these opportunities to borrow are mm -hmm. there. Right. We encourage especially the young people mm -hmm. to save. And the platforms are there and innovations are, are coming up uh, again digitally mm -hmm. to make that possible for them. Right. But again, financial education is also something that's wanting. Right. Financial yeah. education is very important, but it's wanting. Uh, Jared, I'll give you the opportunity to give us a one-liner mm -hmm. before I close off. Well, just to say that credit bureaus have made a big difference mm -hmm. to our credit market. Mm -hmm. They have brought credibility, they have brought stability. Mm -hmm. uh, before the credit um, bureaus were introduced, there was a lot of instability in the credit market. Right. We are also getting to see that bureaus are giving us a lot of information in the form of uh, research uh, opportunities, which is informing, again, government decisions and, and other lending decisions. Mm -hmm. So when we, see, when we get into the credit bureau and extract some, some research data, mm -hmm. it is really helping the credit market to innovate. All right. Thank you so much, Jared. Thank you so much, Wanjiko. We've had a very amazing conversation here on the marketplace. We were talking about digital lending. Kenyans are big on borrowing, not so big on saving. And 
apparently not so big on paying back sometimes. Mm -hmm. Now, we are hoping that, you know, digital credit providers do get what they need, especially in a fiercely or unregulated space. And maybe the government could tighten a few nooses, a few belts, so that we can have the best that we possibly can in this particular sector. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. My name is Hibak Saeed, and of course, Rodan Yamai on Sign Language Interpretations. Good night.